Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a long time since we've had uh, some straight talk. Um, so welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. And even if you're passing through, hit the likes button. And if you're returning, hit the likes button. And I always say, what do you have to lose? Hit the subscribe button. If you've watched my channel, more than once, hit the subscribe button. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And then hit the likes button. So I wanted to come on today because this is just a sad case uh, out of Milwaukee. It's about a young lady who, um, and I'm sure you all have all heard about it. So if you've heard about it and you don't want to hear about it because you've heard about it over other YouTubers channels, then go ahead and click off. You don't need to leave a comment telling me that you've heard about it. And, you know, uh, you know, anytime you go on any uh, YouTubers channels, we talk. So I've gotten comments saying, oh, you talk too much. Well, what else do you do when you're on YouTube? You talk. You don't just sit here and look at the screen. So if you don't like talking and you don't want to hear me repeat myself, click off. But we're going to get started. Her name is very beautiful young lady. Um, her name is, uh, they say Sade, but I, some people uh, pronounce it Sade. I'm pronouncing it Sade, but they pronounce it a different way in the news videos. But her name is Sade Robinson. And she was a young um, lady, um, 19 years old, out of Milwaukee. She had gone on a date. And I'm not for sure, I'm unclear, I guess, of how she, I, I believe she met met this uh, young man. I, I don't, he doesn't look too young to me. He looks much older than she does. But they met on Tinder. And they um, met, went on this date, and she, um, you know, went from there. It was their first date. And they met um, at a restaurant and they, you know, um, I guess during the investigation, the they had text messages and they said that they were going to meet at this one spot where he worked. He had, um, he said that, you know, if she was hungry and I wanted to gather those text messages and if I have time. Um, tonight or maybe in another video, I'll try to gather those because I wanted to try to find those text messages. But they had text messages where they exchanged where they were going to meet up. And she, um, over the text messages, uh, they ended up, uh, you know, back and forth. And he said, um, if you're hungry, you know, we'll, we can eat at uh, the, this place where I used to work. And he was going to pick up his W-2s or W-4s for his taxes. So she said, fine. So they ended up meeting there and eating and having drinks or whatnot. And she shared this uh, location share. You know, there's a lot of um, apps that you could share, you know, your locations with different family members and different friends. And my daughters, you know, they share um, their location with me, but there's also a new location um, share that my daughter has uh, shared with me. And it's kind of, uh, you know, it's it's different. And what it is, is that you share your location when you're going from one place to another. And if you don't arrive at that location, it automatically call, calls 911. And my daughter had started sharing that, which she shared it with me a few times. And now she doesn't do that anymore, which I think it's very important for all uh, not just young people, but anybody to, to, you know, make that a habit of sharing your location. It's very important. And I do tell my children, because I do have three young, um, three young adults. My older daughter is 30 in her thirties. And, you know, even with her, I'd love for her to share her location with me. I know when, when you have children or even when you're adults, it's like, you know, why should I have to share my location? You know, I'm grown, you know, this, that, and the other. But it's so important to share your location where you go so that, you know, um, 
your friends and loved ones or somebody knows that you've gotten to uh, home safely or to wherever you're going safely. And that way, you know, we can, you know, click on the phone and say, hey, did, you know, Michelle arrive at her destination, you know, okay, um, you know, let me check and make sure. And, and that just gives a person the ideal of, okay, did, did she arrive there? And if, if you didn't, they can pick up the phone and call. And if, if you're not answering, then something is wrong. It gives somebody, you know, an idea that you're home safe and you're, you know, just, you know, be safe. Everybody needs to be safe these days. And so she did that. And it just so happened that one of her friends had called, you know, called, um, and reported her because she didn't show up for work. And her boss said that she was just like an A1 employee, that she never called into work and she just happened to miss work this, this day. I She did everything right. And I think that when we're, even with adults, we, we tend to trust, you know, the nice people. And she left the restaurant. I, I think they ended up going to, you know, another location. Her friends at have tracked her going to a different bar after they ate at this place of employment where he used to work. They ended up going to another bar. And then she ended up going back to his house. And from what I understand, he had like a dungeon in his home. And I think sometimes and I'm not knocking anybody. I think as adults, as young adults, we can teach our children and or talk to anybody until we're blue in the face and say, don't do this. Don't go there. And I think we've all done things that we say that we would not do. She did everything right. She met him at the restaurant on common in a public place. I think that she felt like he was a nice guy. I'm, you know, he seems very nice. What is it going to hurt to go back to his place? And I think that's where the mistake was. And we, you know, we we always say what we're not going to do, what we wouldn't do. And so we, you know, we just really need to instill in our children and, 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 and even in amongst ourselves, you know, not to go on the first date or any time with anybody. If, even if they look trustworthy, don't go back to their homes. You know, you can't even trust a person that you've known for, you know, sometimes years, let alone a day. This was a bright, intelligent woman. Her mom, this little girl was getting, I think she was getting like an associate's degree. Just very intelligent. And this monster took her life. This happened out of Milwaukee. But I just wanted to kind of give you guys some insight before I played some of the news. So we're going to start from the beginning. I'm sure all of you all have heard this story. It's been all over the news and I'm sure all over YouTube if you've watched it. But I'm going to I want to give it give commentary on my channel. So um, we're going to start from where it started and um, give some commentary um, it's a really sad story that this little, this young lady, I shouldn't say little girl, but this young, bright, beautiful um, young lady, her life was cut short. And I will keep this next thought until after I play the video, but we will play the video and I will bring, I will come back up with some of my thoughts.
six-year-old, the 19-year-old woman killed and mutilated after a first date, has been searching for days for her remains. But tonight, they took some time to mourn. Fox 6's Stephanie Quirk joins us live after an emotional vigil with how Shade Robinson is being remembered. Well, Robinson's family tells us that the home bridge here behind us should be lit up pink momentarily in honor of Robinson. They say pink was her favorite color. Meanwhile, search efforts today by both foot and boat yielded no new finds, but tonight her loved ones took a moment to grieve. An emotional scene. I need to lose my baby to peace. As a heartbroken family mourns the tragic loss of 19-year-old Shade Robinson. He had to take my daughter to speak for the rest of the girls. It's not fair. I'm hurting. I'm in turmoil. Loved ones gather to grieve Robinson, who authorities say was brutally killed and mutilated on April 1st. And it's, it's going to be tremendously hard to move on living without her being here, especially the way she got took it from us. Investigators say after a first date, 33-year-old Maxwell Anderson killed Robinson, dismembered her body, and spread her remains across the county. And we're going to get justice for Sade. Yeah. Justice for Sade. Thursday, investigators discovered more of Robinson's body parts. But her loved ones say the search for the rest carries on. It's hard for Sade to rest in peace. <laughs> when we literally are still searching for her remains. Community members join Robinson's family in the search and at Friday's vigil, hoping to put a focus on the life she had. Shade Robinson's voice will not go unheard. Rather than the person who took it. And giving us the, the will to keep on living and moving on. <laughs> And as you can see behind me, the home bridge is now pink in honor of Robinson, lighting up the night in honor of her memory. The family tells people to keep on the lookout in the search for the rest of her remains. They're hoping to give her a proper burial. Reporting live in Milwaukee, Stephanie Quirk, Fox 6 News. That is special, yet tragic. Steph, thanks. That, that is just sad that, you know, some parents, you know, they're, they're looking for their child. They're hoping that maybe she's safe. They're hoping that maybe she's there, you know, something, but to, to have to look for remains and to tell others to look for remains that is just sad it's it's just sad i can't even imagine what that mother is going through like i said i have three daughters and this mother has um other daughters that she is raising. I think she has a 16 year old and I can't even imagine what that would feel like to have your young daughter go missing just to, you know, she's, she's finding herself. And, you know, as a mother, you want to protect your children. And I know that my kids have often told me, you know, because I tell them, you know, be safe. And they think that I'm overbearing because I want to know, you know, I, let me know when you get home or let me know, you know, um, call me when you get home. And, and sometimes I'm like, I call them and I'm like, you didn't call me when you get home. And they kind of get irritated with me. But it's because I want to make sure that they're safe. I want to make sure that, you know, you want to just protect your children because these things happen. And you can't always protect your children. And I think that it, it's just a hard thing. It's just a hard thing that, you know, you want, you want to do so much for your children. And so I, I can't even imagine what this mom is going through. 
So prayers to her, prayers to this mother. I'm going to stop rambling and I'm going to play the next clip. And is dedicated to Shade, hoping to help and bring closure to her loved ones. In Milwaukee, Miriam McCarr, TMJ4 News. On April 20th, 1999, the mass shooting. Okay, that one, um, basically they were just looking for her, you know, the community came together and they were just looking for um, any um, looking for her at that point, and then I guess um, went into looking for any remains of Sade. So the community came together. This next clip that I'm going to play is some of Nancy Grace's interview with the mother, and um, I'm going to have to come in and do a commentary because of copyrights. But I want to play a little bit of Nancy Grace's interview with the mother. Um, so we'll get into that. And like I said, some of you have seen this. Um, so if you click on here and you've seen uh, some of this through other YouTubers channels or you've seen Nancy Grace's interview or you've seen some of this, just click off. You don't need to leave a comment or anything. Just click off. I want to do this for my channel to, uh, sh you know, uh, bring awareness to the missing brown and black girls that are missing in Milwaukee. There's a lot of them, and this guy could be tied to some of those others out there. Could be. until I went from 184 to 123. I was doing everything right. I just needed a little. Shade is a beautiful, beautiful soul. I, I knew that my kids were very special and different. They we're, were, my parents raised me, they raised us. We are light workers. We put out positive energy, we exert, we help others. I'm a community advocate as a personal way of my life, the way I live. I, I've worked for others. I help others my whole life. I've raised my daughters that way. My daughters have excelled. I have two daughters. This has caused so much emotional effect to my family. Her, her, my parents who love my baby so much, her grandparents, her uncles, her aunties, the community. Everyone has pulled up. This has affected many people in Milwaukee. I'm coming here today. This is the hardest thing I would ever have to do in my life to speak Shade's voice. Shade was a beautiful soul. She was an amazing girl. Nancy, everything you spoke was exactly what my daughter exerted. I couldn't have asked for any better daughter. There was things my daughter did that many adults were not even able to accomplish in their lifetimes. And I'll be 43 in a week. My birthday's on April 27th. Shade's birthday's on May the 10th. I had her on Mother's Day. 
the son of a I'm gonna watch my language on this platform. But the son of a took my daughter from me a month before she's graduating with her associate of arts degree. She works so hard. She's a full-time student. She has two full-time jobs. She has her own little bachelorette apartment. She doesn't stay in a college dorm campus. She has her own bachelorette apartment. She has her own car. She pays all of her own bills. This is traumatizing, Nancy. I never expected this to pull up on my front door. This isn't normal. This is a 2024 Jeffrey Dahmer. I need him held accountable. I need justice for Sade. There has been a lot of, in a many black and brown girls that have been gone missing in Milwaukee for a moment. And all of them are going to be held accountable now because they put, they messed with the wrong family. They messed with the wrong family because we're not going to stick quiet and we're not going to sit still. And we're going to call all of them out and we're going to speak for the whole community. Because I'm not about to sit down and I'm not about to sit still on this one. It's justice for Sade, Nancy. It's justice. Miss Scarborough, I feel like anything, anything I or anybody on this panel could say right now, it, it pales compared to what you just said. And Believe me, Miss Scarborough, this story of Sade has not just touched people in Milwaukee. It has touched people around the world. And when you say you're not going to sit back, neither are we until there is justice for your girl and the other missing and murdered girls across Milwaukee. They're not all just missing. They're dead. Many of exactly. them are dead. Guys, with me is Sade's mother, who is in so much pain, but she is joining us tonight to speak out for Sade. What happened? What led up? to this night yes nancy this is yes nancy the last time i spoke to my daughter was on easter sunday okay we seen her she came by my parents home we spent the sunday together this was easter sunday okay um i cooked for them both of my daughters we all met by my parents house where i'm currently at we all commute here. All my girls are busy. They're my youngest is 16. They have a lot of activities. They're working. They go to school. I have very successful and independent, self-sufficient hearts. Oh, nothing works on this acne. Hi. Who? I'm a licensed dermatology provider from Curology. Oh. Answer a few questions. I'll look at your skin and prescribe you a personalized cream. Wow. We're working to learn more information about the disappearance of Shadé Robinson and the possible. So that was just a little bit of the Nancy Grace interview that she did with the mom. If you all want to see more of it, go check out Nancy Grace's um, channel. But this monster, um, and let me find a picture of him. Let's see.
Okay. Let's see. And let me get a picture of him. This is the 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 monster, I should say, that um, unalived uh, shot a. Um, Let's see. Yeah. So, let's see. So this is the uh, the guy that um, unalived her, and uh, that uh, she went on the date with, and thinking that this guy um, was a nice guy. Um, we'll blow him up there, and. Uh, yeah, this is the guy. So they, you know, his, her mom called him the, the, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. And, uh, yeah, that's exactly what, uh, this guy was. Um, so I, um, it's just a, a very, um, very sad case. Um, I feel really, really bad. I should say sad, I guess, for the mom. Um, I really feel sad for the mother. Um, I can't even imagine her pain um, and, and what she's going through. And I hope that I say this all the time. Um, I know there's only one person and I, you know, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And he will get his, uh, he will meet his maker and um, he will pay for um, his sins. He will pay for his sins. And um, it's not for us to judge. It's for his maker to, to, you know, judge him. And, you know, may um, Sade rest in peace and I will keep her family in prayer. I will keep her family in prayer um, and her mother especially hold her tight in prayer. I can't imagine. And I think for all of us adults, you know, there was Ryan Strain that, you know, there was a similar thing that happened, you know, not similar, but, you know, drinking at the bars and stuff. Just make sure that when we, you know, with our, especially our, our young children, that we hammer it into their heads, as well as our friends, our friends and our family members that, Wherever they go to please let somebody know where they're going, give them their location, um, some sort of check in uh, to make sure that they get to their location and that we all um, be held accountable for checking in on our loved ones and our friends to make sure that they get to those locations safe and sound. And that if they don't, that we make sure that we check in on them. Uh, to make sure that they've arrived at those locations. And if they, if they haven't, then we sound those alarm bells and that we get those, you know, get them checked in so that these things won't keep happening. Make sure that when you, you know, you're dating, 
that you don't go back to the homes with these, these people that you've met for the first time. Keep it safe and make sure that when you go on these dates that you do meet like she did in a public place and you, you, you keep it there and you make sure that they don't follow you and you make sure that they don't give you a ride back to your place. You make sure that they know no personal information about you. We've got to keep it safe because there's so many monsters out there this day and age. Dating is not like it used to be. And so we all need to be very careful and as I have young girls, I want to make sure that they're safe as well in the dating scene. And I don't care if they get annoyed with me. I'm going to keep hammering it in because I love them and I want them to be safe. So let's keep Sade Robinson's family in prayer. And I will keep this case. I want to know what's what's happening uh, with this case. Um, I also, you know, don't know what's going on with Sebastian Robbins, uh, Sebastian Rob Rogers case. Excuse me. Nothing has been said about that. They haven't found him. And I'm hoping that they do find him alive and safe. We don't know anything about that. And I pray that he's he comes home alive and 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 safe doesn't look good. There's nothing being said about it. So we want to, you know, make sure and keep um, Sebastian uh, and his dad and, you know, family uh, in prayer. And also we don't know what's going on with uh, the Madeline Soto case. Uh, we know that uh, the monster that uh, did those horrible things to her, you know, uh, uh, waived his rights to the arraignment. Uh, we have yet to hear from what's going to happen with uh, Madeline Soto's mom. Um, so, you know, I'm key, I want to keep an eye on all of those cases and keep those cases also to the forefront as well. Not let those cases pass us by and just, you know, brush them under the, uh, under the wayside, you know, because they've died down. We need to keep those cases alive, too, because those are innocent children that um, one still missing, the other one unalived uh, from a monster and her mother that allowed that stuff to go on. And uh, especially this precious angel that was taken way too soon. So keep your children safe, parents, and even if it annoys your children to hammer it in every time they go out or they go out on a date. And even if they say, well, I'm grown, please you know, hammered in that they need to give you their location. Please, it's important. And 